We know that suffering exists. Now we can begin to analyze how it operates. Therefore, we say, what is the what is suffering and what is the cause of suffering? For example, a man devotes his life to accumulating wealth, and he succeeds. And having accumulated wealth, he feels that he has fulfilled his own destiny. But this man is already in trouble. By the time he has accumulated the wealth, the suffering has already started, and there's no way of avoiding it. In the first place, as Buddha said, the man who has is forever living in the fear of loss. Someone is going to take away from him that which he has, and by taking it away from him, will result in great anguish of nature for him, for the reason that he has put his happiness in his pocketbook. Is a, who steals that makes him a beggar indeed. Now the other man, faced with the problem of money, doesn't succeed in accumulating the fortune. So he is miserable because he has not the money. The man who has it is afraid of losing it. The man who has not got it is miserable because he can't get it, and the, nothing is happy anywhere in the picture. It just keeps right on going. Now the ambition to have is not only leading us to the problem of a society which wishes to rob us of what we have on the slightest provocation and respect and puts us in the spot of inflation and all the problems of finances that we have today with unstable dollars or the world economy upside down, the unemployment rising. All of this is part of the byproduct of a false ambition in the first place. We have done it wrong from the beginning. We have made error glamorous. We have made certain procedures satisfying to the selfishness in ourselves. And when the, the castle we have built falls down, we are all miserable, and we look around trying to figure out who caused it, and finally lay the blame upon the devil. Which he has been blamed for so many things, however, that I guess he can stand the burden better than we can. But how does it happen that for four or five or six thousand years, back into the time of Egypt, we have followed such a pattern, fully aware that it won't work, fully aware that the price of what we have is too great for what we get out of it, and nobody changes. Still that hope, that gamble, that belief. That we, in ourselves, will be happy with that which has made all others miserable, or that we alone are miserable because we have not got what all others are seeking. So here is a problem of, of suffering, and in the gaining of this today, we find that the complication of accumulation is itself a great cause of suffering in many ways. We are having more and more coronaries. In middle life, the successful business people, the constant struggle to accumulate, the constant effort to outwit the competitor. These are working a terrible hazard upon our health, upon our disposition, and upon all the personal values of living. They are impoverishing our lives, damaging our homes, and wrecking our bodies. And yet, it's all in the great cause. We want to be, if possible, the richest man in the family graveyard. This is our great、uh, joy.、Uh, Buddha also points out that if we work like this for a whole lifetime, getting it, and we finally do get it, and it's cost us everything else besides that which we determined to get, then in the midst of all this, we wrap the curtains of our couch about us and lie down and die. We don't even live long enough to enjoy a part of what we have done. We have sacrificed life and never lived to make the sacrifice worthwhile. If we were going to live 500 years with the wealth, it might seem more useful or more reasonable to do things. But in the midst of accumulation, we drop down and out. 
and all that we have worked for with a lifetime, from the beginning of our schooling to the day of our death, is left behind. Why then should we make this world miserable, and ourselves miserable, to get something that we cannot live long enough to use? And if we do not use it, we leave it to others who haven't earned it, who either lose it or abuse it. And uh, their story I've told of the old Roman, who after he was dead, used to sit as a ghost in his house and watch his children squander his funds. It would be very unhappy experience, but it is the only experience. No matter what we leave behind, someone will ultimately abuse it, even if we leave it to an institution. The institution will change in the course of time. There is no solution. So we are following a will of the wisp. And in the sense of accumulation, we have gradually built up a world of, com of competition leading to war, crime, and all kinds of misdemeanors. And we have to sit in the midst of this. The thief has to be afraid that he will be robbed in turn. There is no safety in anything. Yet the world keeps right on going. Our great codes do not correct the situation. Our great universities do not help young people to find out what is valuable and necessary. No one is interested in the ingredients of natural and simple happiness. Everyone wants gain and profit and thinks of happiness in terms of accumulation rather than in terms of internal maturity. Thank you.